as you know, to have a growth, you also need to have a predictable and stable and uh, well thought regulatory framework. Uh, and in this regulatory framework, it's evolving and it also uh, leans on an increased input from science and technology. If you look into the policy of the European Commission, you will note that about one fourth of all legislation has a very strong science and technological component. The GRC is organized uh, in a decentralized way. Uh, there are seven institutes in five member states uh, covering a specialized uh, policy area. We have the Institute for Energy, which is in Patton in uh, the Netherlands, the Institute for uh, Reference Material and, and Measurements, which covers the all meteorological aspects uh, of the uh, European Union internal market and trade, which is in Belgium, the Institute for uh, trans uranium Element uh, <coughs> in Karlsruhe, then uh, Institute for Environment, Health and Consumer Protection, and Protection and Security of the System of the Citizen, uh, which are in ISPRA, on uh, and where actually significant part of our activity is, is being done. And, and last but not least, the Institute in Sevilla, uh, which uh, is responsible for prospective technological study, has generated, for instance, what Minister Kleiber was mentioning this morning, the uh, first studies on foresight, uh, looking at the, uh, how the, uh, uh, what are the priority, how the uh, socio economic development in the future impinge on the uh, policies and how the uh, science and technology policy could respond to the predicted uh, socioeconomic. Basically, the GRC has four competences which have more or less the same size and are related to European policies. Uh, first is food chemical uh, products and health. Secondly, environment and sustainability. Uh, then nuclear safety and security and, and force also a series of horizontal activity uh, cutting across uh, public security, anti-fraud, reference material, measurement and prospective studies. The total budget is about uh, 1 billion uh, euro but this covers four years. When we uh, started the uh, enlargement negotiation, the, the GRC has taken, uh, we have taken a very uh, proactive stance to support this important uh, policy and uh, this important process. And since we, we, we have acquired over the, the year quite a, an important expertise in the field of uh, EU policies, we, we have set up the goal to help the enlargement process by, uh, in the area of our competence, to, to help countries to deal faster with the uh, science and technology components of the policy. Because, I mean, the accession negotiations were mostly dealing with the uh, juridical framework, whereas we, we deal uh, with the uh, science and technological component, we are probably the, the best organization suitable for doing, performing this job. And of course, by doing so, we also contribute to the development of the European research area, which is a task of much larger and wider dimension where we are simply an actor, whereas in the first, uh, for the first objective, we are probably the main actor. And therefore, we have put in place a series of, of instruments and, uh, and a detailed description of, the, of these instruments. I will go through these five instruments and to try to attract your attention. Uh, first of all, we have opened a certain number of projects on specific science and technological needs of the enlargement countries. And in particular, looking at the different policies, there are some policies which were uh, the uh, acceding country had particular needs, uh, both in the field of metrology, environment, uh, nuclear safety, and, and, and as I said, foresight and support to agriculture. I will give you a few examples now of the achievement after four years of this project and how we want to continue. One example in the, in the area of uh, agricultural, uh, is, as you see in the, uh, about 44% of the uh, total budget goes to agriculture. Uh, for Poland this is an important policy as you know. And uh, well, we have to ensure that uh, the uh, common agricultural policy is implemented uh, uh, in a right way and that in particular uh, it can be implemented. And to do so there is a complex uh, technological uh, development 
uh, that has to be put into place, what is called YAX to the specialist, and 5% of all uh, farmers' declaration has to be uh, checked through at least 5% through satellite data and by also ortho imaginary and GPS data, and it's quite, it's quite advanced. In the, in the figure uh, on top, you see how field a parcel of a certain farmer it looks like uh, seen from satellite, and this is combined with data from a digital uh, cadaster, digital mapping, and uh, so we can check if, uh, through satellite, whether the, uh, the, 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 there's been the production that has been declared by that uh, particular farmer, and therefore whether this is uh, in line with, uh, with the subsidies that he require or she requires. And other examples uh, that uh, is being now applied on a pilot scale to Poland is the traceability of livestock. In December uh, 2003, the Commission has issued a new regulation that makes mandatory uh, labeling of all uh, animals, in particular uh, cow, I'm sorry, uh, uh, goat and sheep. We are implementing this legislation by, uh, we have checked about 100 different devices and we are suggesting electronic type of tagging which is uh, not only fast but is also uh, simple to handle and uh, this requires also the set, set up, setting up of, of a complex uh, databases at national level which also can keep track of all uh, movements and trading of animals within the country and outside the country. Uh, the, this, of course, serves more than the agricultural policy, the uh, food and uh, consumer protection policy, in the sense that uh, we could be sure that what we get on our plate is coming from that particular uh, field, and both in terms, for instance, of meat, but also in cheese, and that we can have a full traceability of the product and also guarantee the origin. Another example uh, is uh, what we are using for uh, support to fishery policies. Uh, we have established a system that can check, as you know, we have a big problem in overfishing in, uh, in, in Europe. Uh, and there is a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of illegal fishing vessels that are fishing, uh, overcatching also fish which uh, risk to be in the long run depleted. So we have put in place a system that uses uh, uh, data from high resolution radar and in 35 minutes communicates to the uh, fish and monitoring uh, centers. This is the Baltic, you see the Baltic uh, uh, country, Baltic Sea, and can provide information in 35 minutes of what is, uh, what, ca what vessels are uh, illegal and what vessels are illegal so it, it and help we are helping so that the country to set up this important infrastructure last but not least uh, this is uh, another project that we want to apply in the uh, city of uh, Krakow and we will start uh, next uh, uh, 27th of uh, <coughs> May of May we will develop together with the municipality a, a pilot uh, program for uh, measuring air quality and and uh, emissions in the city of Krakow, which is also a highly, as you know, a, quite a polluted uh, site, and looking also at possible, uh, what is the epidemiological impact of air quality uh, in, in the city and try to develop strategies to improve in the future the quality of, the, of air. Another uh, activity which has been done in particular for Poland is the, uh, to uh, predict with at least six to ten uh, days of advance uh, what are the floods uh, coming from the uh, Oder River. And as you know, this is unfortunately in Poland has had devastating uh, effects in the past. And uh, so we've set up a project to, uh, which binds, uh, combines the weather, weather meteorological data coming from um, uh, the Reading uh, Meteorological Center in England and the German Meteorological Center to predict together with and combine it with a model of the, uh, of the river catchment of the order what will be if there is any risk of a flood and if you give it with this at time of advance then the uh, civil protection uh, authorities can intervene in time to other to take 
protective measures or to evacuate uh, the population. I cannot go too much into detail, but this will be dealt tomorrow. But how, why I'm here? So I'm not just to tell you a nice story, but I'm, because uh, I think it's important we are here because we are looking for uh, interesting and, 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 and valuable partner to, to work with us. Uh, for instance, last year we have been involved in 200 research proposals which have been submitted to FP6 call because we are applying to FP6 on equal footing as with the other, uh, as with all other organizations. And uh, I'm very proud to, to say that uh, about 70% of these proposals include one or more partners from enlargement countries and the average over the framework program is 40%. So uh, I think that we have shown that some, with positive action we can really focus ourselves much more uh, on the needs of the enlargement policy. Uh, these are the priorities of the GRC work program. Uh, everything is uh, very clearly stated on the website. I'm sorry for problem of time. I cannot go too much into details. Third point, which is also important for us, is that we are uh, trying to have also uh, detached national experts of visiting scientists and research fellows working at the GRC Institute uh, for a period going from six months to two or two, three years. For instance, now there are already 10 Polish researchers which are employed uh, at the GRC Institute, which is quite significant. Therefore, in, there is an open call which is uh, which will close on the 28th of uh, May, and whoever is interested, to, there are also profiles and, and terms of reference of, of 80 uh, position for 2004. I certainly would welcome to have more Polish researchers. And this is a quite uh, a, a complete list of the possibilities for uh, Polish uh, researchers to work at our institutes. Uh, there are possibility for uh, research fellows also through the Marie Curie uh, schemes and there is also a new possibility for temporary staff that have to be, uh, can be, uh, can work for four, uh, even to six years and uh, the procedure go through the fill up, filling up of a database which is called ELSA that can be found on the uh, CORDIS site. Uh, you will you'll find the website on, on my slides. There is also possibility for trainees less than 30 years that helps also for research training. We do in fact have quite unique uh, infrastructures, research infrastructure that are very suitable for training young mobile uh, researchers. And then also we are now preparing a competition for uh, permanent scientific staff which will hopefully come out by the second part of the year. Then another action which was addressing the enlargement country was the organization of uh, workshops and training courses in particular on those issues which are very strongly linked to the policies. And uh, at least 100, but I think there are probably more, and now we are, we are counting. Experts have been involved every uh, last year in, in these workshops and, and these are often coming from the enforcement lab uh, and, and research organization for each of the policies. Uh, finally, also we, we, we think that Europe is not done in uh, Brussels but is done uh, in particular by coming and visiting you and, and talking to you. I think we've been in contact with 6,000 uh, uh, senior researchers and administrators that, and I think that this has been a very useful tool for, uh, for, for uh, increasing collaboration. Now there is also, you should say that, well I should say that there is an, a national contact point here uh, the, for the GRC the leading person here, but there is also uh, collaborators, is Mr. Jacek Kuczynski. He's, he's been a uh, national contact point now for quite a number of years, so he has developed a very good knowledge of the organization. So it's myself, him, and, and also all the people in the institute will be very happy to uh, receive uh, questions or whatever to reply to your uh, career. If you have whatever question, please feel free to send us an email and we will try to reply to you as soon as possible. I thank you very much for 
your kind patience and uh, looking forward to next to see you maybe in Ispra or in another site. Thank you.